welcome to Gadget Mad Lad episode 2. Um, this essentially is going to be me making a macro as quick as possible. If you wonder what a macro is, it's a Nintendo DS Lite, as shown here. It takes a DS game cart in there, it's reverse compatible. It's got a Game Boy Advance slot there at the bottom of it. But the thing is with the Game Boy Advance, it's got a really crap, really, really rubbish backlight. So what people do is, with broken consoles, they take the top bit off, modify it a little bit. Take, I've taken the game cart. This is one I made earlier, essentially. But they take the game cartridge slot out of this and make it so it just has this cartridge slot here. And I'll show you now. Obviously, I need to do a bit of work to this one. But there's no game at the moment, but I'll show you what I mean. You, you essentially, what you do, you, you you make it so it plays Game Boy Advance games through the bottom screen automatically, and you make it so it automatically boots up when you put a game in, in when you put a game cartridge in, and lo and behold, when you turn it on, one second, it turns on. We get the Game Boy logo, and it boots into the Game Boy Player and straight into the game, and you get a really nice backlit screen, really cool. An additional little thing as well is the top screen. Don't throw that away. If you've got a good, you know, um, screen on on the top screen, it's the perfect thing to replace the bottom screen, touch screen with. If you want to take the touch screen out, so perfect size. Checked it earlier on. It definitely it, it fits as well. So that's something I'll be doing when I when I modified the game's housing, so the game console housing, to make it look more decent. Because we can't just leave it looking like that. That looks way too sloppy. Look, this is where the stylus was. You can see this, the boards and shit inside, and in there, not too good. I'm, I'm only got one speaker in this as well, so I plan to put two speakers in. But the point is, I want to make a game of macro for zero. So the, the plan is here. I've got a game by, uh, sorry, a Nintendo DS Lite. The top screen is a little bit of a darker colour. It's not totally broke, but the thing itself is a bit glitchy. So I, I, I think it could do with the the macro touch. So should we say? So my plan is to you, need to, you need to put a fuse into a certain spot on the board. So I've got this old strip of LEDs which has got some little fuses on. They are 151 on them. Probably not going to be able to see that in the camera. I'm guessing that's not going to out of focus. Well this is 151 and it take my word for it, definitely to say that. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to take the fuse off this and we're going to put it into the bottom board on this, which I've got a board here to show you. This is the board from inside, not the, the one that's inside this, but this is another board I've got that's broken, it's got some water damage or something, but here, where we've got LED A2 and PO6, the one below that, and the one directly below that, not to the right, but just directly below, there's a big gap. If you look as well with the fuse, it's actually slightly bigger than the gap. I doubt you're gonna be able to see. I can't zoom in very well because I'm using my phone obviously at the moment, so it's a bit of a tricky thing to do. But I'll show you when we solder it in. <coughs> uh, flip the solder iron on, so that's gonna be getting warm. Right, so that's that gone. Right, so let's get to cracking it open. Right, you've got some basic screws here. You've got a couple of uh, cross heads and a couple of um, our Phillips, if you're calling Phillips, um, and we've got a couple of tri wings. Well, a few tri wings, should I say? So essentially to start with what we've got to do, I have a safe place for keeping your screws because it's easy enough to put the wrong screw in the wrong place and then you start because that messing with things that aren't meant to be prodded by screws where because they're too long or something. So we don't want that happening. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and give you as far a process as I can in regards to taking the, the screws out and putting them back in again. So first things first, we've got a screw that we don't need to worry about and so I'll just drop something on the floor there. Oh no it's nothing, don't worry. It's a bit of something or other. So first things first, the first screw is over the battery cover. That doesn't come out so just put this safely to one side and you should be okay. Inside here we've got the battery which we will remove. Be careful if you're using a flathead screwdriver like I'm doing because it can pierce the battery and obviously you can have troubles there because it's lithium and I think everyone knows about lithium batteries being dangerous if you Pierce them or anything, so enough said there. Right, so we get sort of underneath the battery cover, we've got two cross head screws, two little cross head screws. So, what I do, I have this little pile here next to me, my screwdriver lid, so to speak, 
and I put the screws essentially next to well in 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 a kind of order. So I remember you know like descending order. I take them out in in like this will be screw screws number one to me. Number one and two came out first, so they're going last. Like now I know there's sorry there's two more cross heads which are slightly discolored. So you can tell the difference between these ones and them ones. So to get the battery cover off, the back cover off in total, you need to have four cross head screws and three, four, sorry, um, tri-wing screws. So two of the two up here, I've got like a yellowy kind of green tinge to them. These are the cross head screws. The tiny little cross head screws that are like deal little things, they go into here and here. And our tri-wing screws are here, here and here but there also is a tri-wing screw in here which I haven't actually got in it at the moment I think I took it out for uh, just have a look at the board I can't remember essentially there's, there's a tri-wing screw in there but it's missing from this one so there usually is four there's three big ones and there's one little one the little one goes into the DS cart slot port kind of thing and the uh, three big ones go into the, this one this one and this corner one here so you put it back together again if that helps is my tri my tri-wing screwdriver. Stick it in, lefty loosey. We get the screw out. Put that to your side. Organize them as you prefer. But I just put them in little sets of the, the same size screw essentially, and I remember out and then I start remember to put them back in a certain order. So at this point now we should have access to the innards. The glorious innards. So being careful here, obviously, what we want to do, we want to make sure the power button's down and the volume button is to maximum because this is the easiest way to click it back on again and confirm we'll click back on when we click it back on, if you know what I mean, if you're following along. So we get a splodger, we, a spudger, or a spudger, a prior tool, whatever you want to call it, essentially we stick it inside the gap and we run it around. You'll feel it clip, you'll feel it click as the clips undo, then obviously all of a sudden it'll all come loose. Then you want to place it down, you want to gently lift up the top bit, careful not to knock the uh, L and R button because there are a little bit of a pain in the bum to get back on again, so carefully put your back to one side where you're not going to miss out where it is. And with these, what I tend to do, because they've got a bar inside them, the L and R bumpers, um, essentially, it's not held in place by anything except for friction, and there's a spring that need, you need not to lose, and you can't really lose the position of it either, so what I do... I put my finger on the metal bar and as I pick it up, lightly pry it, you'll feel it ping open the spring, that's not a problem. Just make sure it all stays together. As long as your bar's going through and your spring's in the centre and you've not lost your position, you're all good. So I'll just put that to one side for now, there. And you stay there because I like it to, to know that it's not going to go anywhere. Again with that one, same dealio. So at this point, we're presented with the board itself, right? So. You might notice this looks a little bit different. That's because essentially I've when I've, I've already done a repair on this one, so I had to repair the bottom screen. Oh, sorry, before I forget as well, there is one one other screw. This is your last screw in the bottom half of it. Essentially, this is the crosshead that's holding the board to the actual housing itself. So take that out, put that to one side where you want to where you know you got it kept safe. I know the organisation of my own, so that's not a problem for me. But essentially here you present it with the, the back of it. Now, don't go pulling on it just yet because you've got a few things that you need to do first. There's, uh, there'll be a black cable here that's running there. It's usually running underneath the cartridge slot here, over here. So what you need to do is you need to disconnect that first things first. Disconnect that. And there's a white one here with a little black end that's connected there. That's your camera, no, microphone cable, sorry. The black one, by the way, is the Wi-Fi, which we can re-put back inside for games that utilise that if... There isn't a game by advanced games that I actually do. I'm not too sure if there is, but I can't see it being a problem with just putting it back in. I think there's enough space when I'm done. So so the trick right now is to unhook that, which I think we've done, yeah? So we're done there. So at this point, you'd be carefully pulling this wire, this black one I'm pulling here, essentially feeds underneath this cartridge sort of here, so you'd likely be pulling it through trying to avoid the stuff. Don't pull it too hard, just kind of like, if it snags on something, push back in, wiggle it, pull it back out again until you can essentially free the thing. But what a lot of people do, if, if they're repairing them and you want to like, put it back together again as a DS, so you're just repairing the screen or something like that, essentially, you you can get it back through. I've been able to get it through when I've had it like, you know, like the board's loose like this and I've been practicing threading it through. I can get it through that time pretty much 
five out of six times. Well, four out of five times even. <laughs> with numbers comparison. But then what I'm getting to is it's really hard to do with like this. So unless you want to kind of have a mental breakdown, <laughs> trying to re post it through, I strongly suggest, but maybe you might not want to miss to be honest with you. Right, so this thing here, and back to what I was talking about before losing myself, <laughs> is the Wi-Fi chip. So this isn't only the Wi-Fi chip, it's the BIOS chip as well. So if you forget to put this back in again, when you put it back together, it will not boot up. You'll get no sign of life whatsoever. So carefully, just so, so <laughs> carefully, and I'll rip it up like that. Point is, it's got a little sticky thing there that sticks it down. That's why it feels like it's more stuck in than it is. But it's a sort of Lego connection kind of socket kind of thing that plugs in place. If you understand what I mean. Yeah. But well, again, we've got to keep that safe. And I think each one's distinctive to the individual console. So I don't, I'm not too sure we can use this in, like, say, a different one. But I'm guessing we we'll, can check that out at some point and find out, maybe. <clears throat> right, so at this point now, what we need to do is lift the board out of carefully, right, actually. So what I do at this point, because usually the screen sticks to the board, so if it's a fresh one and it's all kind of newish, then you shouldn't have much, too much of trouble with this. But what I tend to do is I give it a little poke, you know, where the touch screen is, to push it through a little bit, to lick give it a bit of lift, and since I then let it close again. Because by doing so, you're giving yourself just enough things so you can... Right, so that's what I need to do right here. So, losing track again. Right, so we've got a little thing here. A little last uh, catch thing, my bob. Okay, connector. Um, what are they called? Um, zip connector or something. Or zip connector or... Some sort of the cable tie. Where well, the ribbon runs through from the digitizer. This little thing here, you need to be careful. If you intend to use the touchscreen, that is, you need to be careful. If not... Not so much, but essentially that was what was keeping it from lifting up then. So now we should be able to lift it up. Again, like I said, pry it open a little bit. Give it a little poke. That should help you on your way. Give you a bit of liftage. So at that point, we're good. So we want to do is let it close and don't pull it away from it too hard because you will snap the top thing. Again, obviously, if you're not asked about using the top screen, then do as you want, essentially. Just try and not mess anything up too much just, cause, just because, essentially, makes it easier to... Reuse it for parts or something, or components or something. Cause I like to use components from pretty much everything. So at this point, we've got the board disconnected. So for now, we can move this to one side. So this is what we this is what we're needing. So let's put that there for now. Now we oh sugar. Careful when you pick it up as well. You want to be as careful as you possibly can with this. We are, I'm going to be removing the digitizer off this and using the screen off the top screen to give me like a kind of not plastic glass but plastic kind of protective. Kind of screen because if you take the digitizer off this, it's it's a bit, little bit opaque. The you know the plastic, so I personally think if you lose that, you get more of a crystal kind of clear kind of display because it makes the whole thing kind of look nicer in general. So we put this to one side of the screen, which we've just disconnected with that catch there. Since it's just that one thing and the digitizer on the other side, which is looping over. So I'll move this to one side for now, and at this point we've got what we need. This thing here is the bread and butter of the whole thing. So what we need to do. We've got PO6. I'll try and show you on camera. I don't think. Oh, yeah, you can actually. So we've got PO6, an LED. Oh, that's really jumping out of oh, focus, isn't it? Essentially, can you see them? I'll show it you now, and I'll show it you when I'm done. And you can see, essentially, because we need to put a bit of tin on this, 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 and this. That's the speaker left, speaker right, <clears throat> and the fuse to, that we need to do to uh, mod the thing. So, solar nine should be nice and hot now. Let's get the LED thing above stuck down. Get me tweezers, wherever the hell they are. Where are the tweezers? Where are the tweezers? Where are the tweezers? Gotcha. Right, so, like I said, it's a 151. I think you're meant to use a 3300 or 33,000 um, ohm or something resistor. It's to simulate that the top screen's attached, essentially. That's what this is kind of doing. But I messed about with it, and I found that this worked quite well, so... Why the hell not? I like to do everything as cheap as possible. <laughs> and let's just say... If I can salvage a part from another board, that's going to be scrapped otherwise. Bend it in the landfill. That's never a good thing. Right, that should lift that. So now we turn it on the other way. 
Essentially what I did, I lifted, levered it off because it's kind of like a paper material anyway. And this should, there we go, freed it up. Easy peasy, tiny little thing. So small. Right, so now we've got a little fuse that we need, so we'll move that out of the way. Bring this back into the limelight, get my solder. <clears throat> Put the tweezers to one side. And right now I'm going to solder the spots that I need to solder. So, a little bit of solder there. Some people, you, oh, I need to turn the solder on down a little bit actually. What it at about 275 if that makes sense. That's Right, so just tinning the pads that we need to solder to. You don't go crazy with the solder. Essentially, more, less is more. You can. It's easier to add a bit more than it is to take some off. Unless obviously you've got solder work, in which case, go for it. Whatever floats your boat. Got the wire snugged on my light stand there. So wipe off that excess solder. And now what we'll do, we'll get the tweezers. It doesn't matter which way it goes in. It just essentially has to connect to both pads. That's the gist of it. So if we get this like so. It's like knocking my elbow and stuff there. If I just put that on there like so. That's one side done. I'm not too sure if that's making contact or not. You know what we can do? We can heat this up a little bit. Just be careful not to crush the fuse or anything. There we go. So I moved up a little bit. So now we'll come around to this side again. It should. Just give it a little press. Lovely. Beautiful. That is a nice tidy little job that I actually must admit. And that essentially is the Game Boy Advance mod. That's it essentially. <clears throat> well it's not it, there's more to it than that, but essentially what we do now we wire uh, the see the black wire on this is a speaker from the top side of it which I can show you I think I have it somewhere well I'll tell you what we'll just do it so it right so as I said that's that side done now for now so what we'll do for tonight we'll just add the one speaker so and we'll lose the top screen because that sounds like fun to me right so first things first right so let's just move this back out of the way again we'll get come back to this in a second the motherboard so here we've got two crosshead screws holding the hinge in place, which essentially is quite easy to take out. So just unscrew them. You won't be needing these screws again, probably, unless you want to keep them for spares or something. I mean, I'll keep them for spares because I might use them for different projects. So why not? So at so this point, we should be able to open. Yep, as you can see, we can. So. If I'm not mistaken, what we need to do right now is, we, what you need to do essentially is, what care you take is at your own risk obviously, I can't be responsible for you breaking your console or anything, but the trick is to give this a little pull, uh, pliers are there, maybe don't use pliers for you unless you've got a very steady hand, but essentially you need to pull that out of the hinge. Let's freeze that up, and then what we can do, we can free the ribbon cable by feeding it through this little slot that there is there, which should, any second now, be careful I'm feeding it through obviously, kind of hard to catch it, but you get it, you get it, come on you bugger, we'll get it, we'll get it. There we go, I think we've got it. Nope. <laughs> oh, 
you know some Finn said it. We're not that bothered about it anyway, so there we go. I just think I got it through quite good as well. <laughs> that was weird. So, so to coil it up and get it through this bit, that's the trick. I'm showing you on camera, and I hope I am. <laughs> so we get the little ring thing over it. We don't need that for anything. Just me a little crap pot kind of thing. Unravel that. And look, we're left with the top screen, which at this point is not totally useless, which every other video I've watched pretty much in regards to this, I said you take the speaker out and that's it, you're done with this then, it's junk. Which it's not, because the screen alone, the glass, is the perfect thing to replace your touch screen. So it's not all fingerprint magnets and stuff. This is quite easy to wipe down and stuff, which the one isn't. So, there's something that I think... I think I had it referenced in one video in regards to the original Game Boy DS, which is... One second, I'll show you. So I came prepared with loads of before, is when I made aliens and stuff. <laughs> this is the original DS light, or DS, what we got to call it. I was led to believe that apparently this can fit onto this. But it's got me thinking, can it though? So I tried that with that one and actually it seems to be fine. So that's what we're going with for this. Right, so right now what we need to do, we've got four little covers, little kind of black tape kind of rubber stopper things. I'm going to pick them off, like I said, we're not really that bothered about this top screen that much other than the screen from it, or the, sorry, the lens for the screen, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I didn't want to come out then, so this is where I uh... But essentially, we want the speakers and we want the screen lens. But what I also want to try as well in a future video I've seen somebody take um, in the like I showed you a second of the original DS. What people are doing with that is um, wiring the LEDs back from the top screen back to the motherboard, to, so they don't have to do that fuse mod that I just showed you. And essentially, that makes it think that the top screen's attached just like that fuse mod does. But it got me thinking that if that runs off that voltage that it runs off on that board, try there and find just wire that to say a certain part on a Game Boy DMG. You know, the original game, but it's not got a cool screen or anything. Could I put that in there and maybe give that a backlight? Because I know the backlight kits aren't too dear for the, them if you use, like, a cheap one. But, I mean, using original Nintendo parts might make it slightly better quality, wouldn't it? So, that's what I'm hoping to do. Like I said, I, I want to go on... I, I've never done these things before other than... Obviously, I've done this before because it should be me his one I've done earlier. But that's the first one I've made of this. I've never given it a go before that. I mean, it was trial and error... Look at the draw, whether or not that was going to work. You know, the fuse off this, and it did, so give it a go. I mean, I always recommend people to give it a try. You know, if you're not asked about breaking what you've got, like worst case scenario, then give it a go. Because, I mean, like I said, what's the worst case that can happen? It can, you can break it, you know what I mean? And there's the thing if you, go, if you keep practicing, you'll stop breaking things, and you might get to the point where you can even repair the things you broke in the past. I mean, I've only ever really repaired phones and stuff in the past, like really old Nokias and, you know, 3310s and 3330s and Sony Ericsson K700s and stuff like that. But, like, I've never really done this kind of stuff before, but I'm finding myself really intrigued by it, to be honest with you. It's quite a fascinating little kind of thing to see how easy things truly are to repair if you just put a little bit of, you know, a bit of effort into it. A bit of knowledge. Right, what do we do here? It's Pride Right, so what we're doing now, I've got the screws removed. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm going to run the spodger prior tool thing around the edges of it. I think, oh my god, that is so stiff. So let's get you out of the way. I'm sure there's probably a technique to doing this, like that I'm totally not getting. Oh, sign of life, here we go. Alright, so we've got access to the, so it, it essentially just clips off. Right, so what we need now is, right, so first things first, right, so, something I learnt off, oh yes, uh, that's the light bar, I was wondering what that was, and I thought it was on the bumpers, it stuck to it, but it's not, it's the other side, of, I'll show you in a minute, essentially, you know, when the light comes on, indicating the charge, or whether it's dead or something, right, so anyway, I learnt this off the retro future, uh, if you give it a little twist like this, you'll kind of feel it pop loose. That should make it not kind of cause too much damage to the screen itself. Obviously, bear with it. 
Because you what you're waiting for is the glue to kind of unstick. Like I said, you want to be careful with the front lens because you want to keep that for future projects. There we go. So we've got it loose there. So what we're going to do now is get it upside down, get everything dangling so you've got it all loose. And then you can get access to the, getting the cable through because we're not that minded about the cable. But I do want to use it for a future mod, so... That came up quite well. Um, right, so now, like I said before, since you want to get the cable and you want to twist it together so it tightens itself into like a coil. I'm probably not showing you well there. But once you can get it through, then just push it through at a certain point. Oh, that's not what I work. Oh, there we go. I've got it through. Obviously, if you're, putting, if you're replacing a top screen or anything, you need to be a lot more delicate than what I'm being here because, as I say, it will not survive it. Otherwise, you need to be really delicate with these top screens. But as you can see, we've got it all free there. So now we've got the, the the microphone, I think it is. Yeah, the microphone and the Wi-Fi module free as well, which is the black cable is the Wi-Fi one. The white cable with the little black thing on the end of it is the microphone one. So at this point, we've got a top screen with a ribbon cable attached to it, and we've got a little pad next to it. With two things soldered to that so what we need, now need to do is pull this longer one free because this is the only one we're going to be doing tonight i will do it when, when i do the, the, the housings on the other ones which not going to be for a couple episodes yet but when i get to that point i will be doing double speakers i'll be going through the process and everything so obviously tune back in for that um i'm sorry if i've gone a bit too much with me talking <laughs> i get a bit nervous and lose myself sometimes but now we're into we're unsoldering the the red and the black wire from the longest speaker, so we're into give it a little touch, and it should just come off that easy. Now we've got this now we're into that's ready to be put into the bottom side, which I'll show you exactly where it goes. Right, so for now I'll go back in there. Right, what we'll do before we carry on, I'll show you the motherboard. So before when I showed you where the pads were, you can now see hopefully. Well, that's all focusing on that. Can you see where tinder pads and where I've got the fuse connected between? So the PO6 one, it's the pad directly below that. That's the, where the top bit of it's connected. And the bottom bit is like the, the, the furthest pad to the bottom of that. We've got SPL0 and SPR, sorry, SPL0 and SPR0 that have been tinned as well. You might see it's a bit blackened because it's sort of sold an iron, but... There, this left and right speaker, SPL0 is the left speaker, and SPR0 is the right speaker. So what you'll be doing is you'll be soldering the red wire to SPL for the left speaker, for the red wire for the left speaker, sorry, and the red wire from the right speaker will go on to SPR0. And the, the, if you're wondering where you put your, the black wire, it's quite simple. If you look on the headphone jack put on it, it, the port, sorry, the... the Connection, sorry, so I'm looking for the leg, sorry, closest to the edge of the board. You see a little minus sign next to that. That's a grounding point. That essentially is your grounding point for your speaker. So you're soldering the black wire from both of them to that. Probably, I think there is another place you can solder it. I'm not, I'm not too sure off the top of my head where that is. So for now, that's what I'm going with. So, like I said, we're only doing the, the, the one tonight, so it will be quite. Simple. <laughs> so for now we'll go SPL, so left speaker. So we want the red wire, which is quite thin. You should already have some solder on it from where you took it off, but if you need to add more, by all means do. So what the trick is here to make sure you're not touching any of the fuse, to make sure you're not touching any of the pads, to make sure the only thing you're touching is the thing that you're soldering it to. So I tend to hold it at this, you know, a distance, so the very tip of it is touching the pad, where I've, sold, where I've got tinned already. And then I lightly just tap it, which should. Yep, that's a nice strong connection, and it's leading out of the way. No problem whatsoever. And what we will do, I need some uh, solder, where have I put my solder? There we go, the solder is there. So, obviously don't let it flap out too much, but flip the thing over. And we're going to the leg down here. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of solder to it, because only because it's used very bare minimal in the you know the um, factories. So just the basics you need to get it to stick down. So there's not really much to tack it onto. So we 
He's had a little bit of solder. Not much. They got a little nice little blob there. It won't affect it in any way whatsoever other than to give me something to stick to. And then what I do with the black one, again, coming in. We're coming in from the top this time. So, one sec, let's move this correctly. Like I said, don't let it dangle about too much, right? So, we're coming up from the top bit now. So, we're going to this pad here, put it right above. So, again, just touch it to it and lightly tap the silver line against it, which should. It looks steady. Perfect, Sean. Oh, I pull it loose, pull it loose. I don't know, my own bleeding strength. Obviously, give it a second to, to set. A little tip as well if the solder ball is bigger, it takes a second or two to set more. So, if you give it a, a tug too early, it will come loose. So, hold it in places for that few seconds and you should be all, all good. <clears throat> right, so uh, the point is this uh, the point of this is essentially if you just snap the top screen off, it won't turn on because it needs to check for the top light being connected to the motherboard that's why you need to do all this stuff essentially and there's no speakers in the bottom of it so this is the way that's the whole point of the speaker mod is to put the speakers in there but uh right so you're wondering now where we're gonna have space for the speakers yeah so this is the reason why i'm only doing one speaker for now because the little bugger has got a stylus in there yeah so what we're gonna do because again we can remove this without too much fuss so we look across the screwdriver, you want to remove this screw, this screw, and this screw, which makes this piece come out and gives us enough space here, roughly, for the speaker. So I'll remove your fit. Obviously, the screws that you don't need to keep track of, keep them separate from the screws that you need to keep track of, because you only need to keep... This, the first set of screws that we took out are the most, most important ones in this situation, because they're the ones that you're going to be using to put it back together again, as a macro, not as a DS light. So... Uh, anyway, so we move that screw, that screw, and that screw. Pump to the side because obviously I don't need them. And that's the stylus holder on the inside. So at this point, if we held this, and set, stretch it around because we don't want to snag in it, obviously. If we hold this like this, we can see it doesn't quite fit. We've got a bit of a problem there, haven't we? So what we can do is trim down this little post here. So with some wire snippers, which I've got somewhere. Let me wire snippers. Wire snippers. Hey boy. <laughs> uh my wire snippers. Just give me a second, I'll find them. Oh bugger don't pet them nearby. Um improvise, improvise, improvise. What can we use? What can we use? What can we use? Plaza day work? Maybe. Uh, we've got my pliers. <laughs> there we go next to me. So, this little section here, hopefully it's not anything too important, but what we will do, obviously you've got to be careful not to do that because I think that's a screw post. Maybe, not definite, but maybe. Right, so, just lightly snap it away. It's quite brittle plastic, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Kind of wiggle it about, does the trick. Dead easy to break loose. Got a bit panicking, I'm thinking, I'd, like, I thought I got, I got all my stuff ready for the video before I started filming. And then, quite literally, I know I had a little mild heart attack then. I'm thinking, oh no, I've lost my bleeding white coat as I No worries though, improvisation skills to the full, and I've managed to find a way around it, so that's perfect now. So, we should have just enough space there now for a speaker, which I will show you. It should fit there. Yes, yeah, perfect, it's lovely, it does. Right, so now we want to put it back together again. That's the trick now. So what we want to do is we don't need that for the snow. Where are we? Where are we? Right, so the front bit of it. Front bit of the thing we've got here, yeah? So now we've got, is what we're going to do. It's going to be a bit lopsided because you've still got your, your post in place. So we've got our screen back, our touch screen, which is sticking to everything. <sighs> Bugger. Right, there we go. So we've got this back. For now, we're not going to reconnect the digitizer, but we are going to reconnect this bit because that's important. So at this point now, we've got to let the thing dangle for a second while we just get this prepared. You can obviously want to position it as a card and to sort of not snagging anything, preferably. Because if it snags and stuff, you're only going to cause yourself more troubles down the line. Now, so make sure your flaps open. You feed it in like so. Right, so put it in, into position like this. So, right, so the game by advance cat is pointing this way. 
the DS cart slides pointing this way. The screen is in that orientation. We place it down like so. Line it up with the finger bob, the slot. That's what I do. And I get my, little, my thumbnail and I give it a little poke either side. And that tends to like, to like jimmy into place. Give it a little wiggle again. Don't go too firmly and be very careful. And then gently put the flat back down again, which is always a bugger to get back down again, but it always goes back down. So there you go, that's that back into place again. So we're all good with it on that front. Right, so now what we want to do, we want to position the wire as we need it. So we are going, where's it going to be? Right, so it's going to be over here. So we want to put the wire around the battery. That's for battery terminal, sorry, battery terminal. So run it over there, if you look, see. Over that, through that, round that, pushing it down. Bear in mind, this will all be out. Oh, we're a bit snug there, aren't we? That'll be okay to go over a little bit. We will be removing this at some point, which I'm going to come back, I'll show you how to do that. I've already done it on the other one. Oh, I almost nearly forgot as well. So, this essentially you need to put back in. So, now we just oh, get it back in place. No fingers and thumbs there. Right, so line it up. Click it. it should just I'm holding it the wrong way around. That's why it's not fastening. <laughs> right, so get it over the right bit. Obviously, you'll feel it like click into place. So there we go, back into place again. Very important that you put this back in. So at this point, we're good to go again. Wires are all connected. Run that one around that. So that's what we can do. Can. Run it over there like that, that'll probably be better to finish with you. So there you go, we've got a nice position for our speaker now. Get our wires out of the way. It's never good to have wires in the way. We could probably trim these down to finish with you. This is probably a good idea to do, which to trim these to the right size. Um, right, so for now that'll do. So let's get it back into its slot. So it should be quite easy to get back into position again. Since you've got post, posts and stuff to align it, you with me? So the screen itself will line up okay-ish, it should do. I think that's okay. So hold that in place, make sure we're all good. The screen's not fully aligned now, but it'll it'll do for now. It'll clip back in when the screws tighten up. Right, so what we need to do now is place that down carefully. First things first is we pick up the bumper buttons, we put it back together then, and then we're all done. So not long now, right at the end. And so we'll put that into the putty's post. Don't do anything with it other than rest it in the post for now, we'll come back to this in a second. Same with this one, keep them together, put it in the post. Dealio, done. Right, so now what we need to do is something like a flat screwdriver, something like that. Lightly press down the bar into the post holder. Get the little bit of spring that's sticking out and so like ping it around. There's a tiny little catch there that you need to hook it onto. Press down so it goes right to the bottom of the catch. And then voila. Your L and R button will be back into place. Obviously it's a bit finicky so be very careful. Watch the spring doesn't ping off or anything. This is why I always recommend holding the bar into place whilst you do this. That's why I can't essentially give you the best view on camera. A uh, little side note as well. I'm getting my good laptop back uh, in a week or two. So editing should be easy enough to do then. So at the moment I've got a crap laptop and I can't edit on it for, for nothing. It's terrible, seriously. It's not the worst specs, but it's still, I can't edit on it. It's really, really bad. The point is, so these are continuous videos for this reason. So well, you will be getting a little slightly higher quality soon, but not just yet. <laughs> all right, so now we're putting the back back on. Make sure you've got your wires and stuff out of it. Wave any screw holes or anything. So, which I think we're all good there. I think we might have a bit of wire sticking out when we're done. Because obviously, all right, yeah, as well. I forgot to say. So make sure your volume rocker is on set to full. Make sure your power thing is down because they will catch otherwise. And you don't want to do that. So your volume thing, make sure that's set to full. And your power thing, make sure that's down. As long as you've done that, they should it's to click straight into place. Line it all up. Oh, you bugger. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the main reasons that we do the shoulder buttons last because they tend to stick to the other thing on the top bit because this that's how it works this bar goes through essentially 
stabbing into the bottom bit and stabbing into the top bit and that's what keeps it in, in place when you fasten it. So again, there's, there's not a problem, obviously, as long as, you lost, as long as you don't lose the piece, you're all good. So the one's in place still. So now, again, it's going in for the kill this time. Come on, leave it up in my side. I think we're all good, I think we're all good, we're all good. That's what now we should be able to squeeze it back together again. Don't squeeze too hard, obviously. Now, to start with, what I do is, because it's a bit loose at the moment, <coughs> uh, get my crossed screwdriver, and first things first, you two discoloured screws, your yellow kind of orangey screws, wherever, wherever they are, you want to get them. Oh, sorry, my mistake, sugar. I'm getting ahead of myself again. I'm going to pry that apart now. So missed one screw. But if we quickly do that, two minutes tops. Right, so here we go. Oh, bugger, drop the thing. See, as the bar comes out, if you're not careful, see, it's not a big deal, but it stored, so let's put it back where it was. We're all good. Let's do this out of the way, second way, because well, the screwdriver was where we were missing a screw. This is a screw that holds it in place, so it's quite important, obviously. Um, just find the right screw. <laughs> Misplaced me, but you know, if it wasn't screwed on properly. <laughs> so, screw goes in, crosshead screw it is. I'm gonna get it not too tight, but tight enough. That's that held in place now. So now, as we were, we can carry on doing what we're doing. So, speaker there, that there. I need to put the spring back into place, don't I? So, let's pop that spring for the third time, I think, now we're on. <laughs> Get it over there, jobs are good and yep, it's all down nice and firm. So put the back on. Everything seems good. We're all good. I think we're all good. Oh, bugger. I think I'm catching on my speaker there. Yep. Nothing I can't handle. I think I'm good. Oh, it's caught again. Uh, yeah, so like, this is the pain in the butt thing about it. It's essentially, you gotta get everything aligned perfectly. Otherwise, you have like a fatal kind of thing as you put it back together again. So I think I'm gonna, I know where I've gone wrong here, essentially. So just reconnect that again. Yep, we're all good. And this time, yep, finger to fall, finger to fall. You are there. Everyone's happy. So I'll click it on again. Yep, we're all good this time. Fasten it. Fasten it. Fasten it. Fasten it. It's all good. Yep, we're all done. Button's working. Thing's working. Volume's working. We're all lined up. Lovely jubbly. Right, so as I was saying, first things first, we've got your Discord screws. You want to put your Discord screws into your slot at the top there. Holding it in place. You want your crosshead screwdriver and you want to screw these in as quickly as you can. Not obviously, don't rush too much because you'll mind up messing something up. But at this point, now we should be able to. Not, you, know, you have to pin it together. So that at this point, we're all good. We're all the buttons. Yeah, all feels fine. Right. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna stick our screws back in. Which I will give an in-depth teardown slash throw back together again. Where I tend to describe every single screw as we take it out and every and then as we put it back together again, I'll describe every single screw where they go. So if you want that comment or something and I'll get on to doing that for you. So cross head screw, cross head screw, cross head screw, cross head screw. These two are the discoloured ones. Right now here, here and here we need to put our tri wing screws, which are right here, so I like to start in the bottom right corner because you're kind of a bit more rigidity to the housing in general. Obviously, don't over tighten because they are quite easy to thread these screws. Cross uh, tri wings are a bugger. It's like Nintendo's security screw essentially. If you remember the game bit screw and the Mega Drive and stuff like that, it's like Nintendo's equivalent of that. It's like Sega's equivalent, wasn't it? But I've seen a few of them years and different things, to be honest with you. So again, our tri last tri wing screw. So very, very, very done. Little, not we're not very done, but we're very nearly done. 
with the video and I can show you in the next episode or a couple down the line how to do the housing I don't know what I'm going about with the housing because it's quite an interesting subject I'm using some, some recycled materials right so that's good then we're all good there so that's done now what we'll do we'll put the full battery in it to confirm that it turns on uh, get a game so there we go do we have sun life? we have sun life and that's how you make a game by macro I was hoping it would be quicker than this and I'm sorry for taking your time but jobs are good then and turn the volume up hear the volume should be able to hear it not more than another thing or not because it's got one speaker and it's not very loud but nevertheless it's still loud enough to hear alright so um, do some, I'll be doing some random just a random tear down or something for the next episode might have a bit of a, there we go. Got a bit of a stiff button, but um, I'll be doing the housing, like chopping this off, uh, essentially filling the cartridge slot and that, filling that, giving it a light bar, giving this an actual hard display so it's not touch screen. Uh, oh, and I also want to add a charger port to it, so I'm, I, most people upgrade these to the micro USB. My plan is to not upgrade it, but to add an additional charge port over here or something where I can give it a micro USB port so it can charge from the micro USB and if you we've got the original charger you can charge it from that instead if you want so it'll kind of because we're taking functionality away from it i figure it's kind of fair to give it something back um anyway so tune back in for episode three and i'll see you for a teardown it'll probably be a bluetooth speaker or something i'll find something interesting so see you then bye